Hello everybody, my name is Rebecca Bell and I work here at Old Storage Village as the Collections Manager and Curator of Textiles. And today we are coming to you from the Fenno House where we're going to talk a little bit about a different type of spinning wheel, sometimes called a flax wheel or a Saxony wheel or a treadle wheel. This particular wheel was made by Obadiah Higginbottom. Obadiah was born in 1750 and lived in Pomfret, Connecticut, and died in 1803. And we know that Obadiah made the spinning wheel because he marked it. He stamped it right here on the end of the table. And that's kind of unusual. A lot of spinning wheels don't have maker's marks or names uh, stamped into them. So the fact that we know who made this wheel is actually quite special. So this wheel is a little bit different in operation from the wool wheel or great wheel that you may have seen previously. Rather than standing at this wheel, you would sit at it, and it's operated by a foot-powered treadle that causes a footman to go up and down, and that in turn causes the wheel to spin. So that mechanism, rather than using your hand to spin, is going to create the motion for spinning. Another thing you might notice that is a little bit different is rather than having a spindle, this has a flyer mechanism, and that is composed of a bobbin, on a metal shaft that turns as the wheel is turning and the wool is actually or whatever material you're spinning is getting sucked up through what's called the orifice a little hole at the front of the flyer mechanism and there are hooks on the u-shaped flyer that help guide the yarn onto your bobbin so this type of wheel was really excellent for spinning fibers like flax flax is a bit trickier to work with it's a plant fiber um, at the turns into linen thread and eventually into linen material. So you'll notice that we have a distaff, which is right next to me, holding the flax fibers, keeping them from getting tangled as you're working with them and spinning them. You might also find that it's handy to have a little cup. In this case, we have a little coconut cup that would be filled with water. So as you're spinning the fibers, you could wet your fingers down to help get those fibers into uh, alignment and kind of stick together as you're spinning them. So after you have spun your fibers, you can take that bobbin right off of the flyer mechanism and replace it with a fresh bobbin and continue spinning. So as with anything made of wood, this wheel and other spinning wheels are very sensitive to temperature changes and particularly humidity changes as the pieces of wood can swell and contract. So in order to keep this operating at peak efficiency, you have to monitor the tension on the drive belt. So you can see the drive belt going around the wheel and onto the whorl on the bobbin. If I need to loosen or tighten the tension on the drive belt, this mechanism here can be either turned one way or the other to move the whole flyer assembly backwards or forwards to tweak the tension. If you have your tension too tight, the whole mechanism will freeze and you won't be able to get any spinning done. And if your tension is too loose, the drive belt will just come right off of the wheel and again, you won't get any spinning done. So it's really important to make sure that you've got just the right tension and also really important to make sure that your wheel is cleaned and well oiled too to keep it working at the maximum efficiency. Thanks so much for joining us and I hope your head is spinning with all of this new information and you're ready to take a spinning wheel for a world. <laughs>